Hi friends, hello, hi, how are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Hello, hi, welcome. Um, today's video is one that has actually been in the making for a few months. I had the idea for this video, oh my God, like probably almost a year ago at this point. Um, and I've been, this script is really funny to me because it's one where I keep writing stuff and then falling down rabbit holes that take me forever to get through and then taking a break from it and then coming back to it and then getting really angry and then coming back to it. So this script has been like almost a year in the making just in terms of trying to figure out all of the things I would like to say about the show Dance Moms. If you have been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know how strongly I feel about child exploitation and specifically children being exploited in like family vlog channels and on the internet because I feel like that's not necessarily something that's been super tapped into in terms of laws and regulations to protect kids. But if we're going to talk about sort of Hollywood traditional exploitation, I don't think there is a better example than reality shows that center around children. And I think one of the best examples of one of the most horrific cases of this is Dance Moms. This show, which focused on a dance teacher, her students, and more importantly, their moms in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, was meant to show a real life world of what it meant to be a competitive dancer, but ended up being somewhat of a phenomenon that people were just obsessed with. The star of the show at the time is a woman named Abby Lee Miller, who we're gonna get into. She was the head dance teacher, but some of the people that were on the show at the time, like Maddie Ziegler and Jojo Siwa, are now incredibly famous in their own right, and the show was sort of a springboard for them to do that. However, despite the success that a few of the girls got from this, I don't think we talk enough about how messed up this show was. I think it's not only important to talk about the really horrific things that ended up happening on this show, but also discuss and talk about who is to actually blame for these things. I think it's really easy, especially for a lot of people who watch the show, to blame the mothers entirely. And while I do think a huge portion of the blame falls onto these mothers, I also think a massive portion of it falls onto Abby Lee herself and also the producers of this show. These children were basically exploited and traumatized with very little reward at the time and were basically treated like pawns in a grown-up game of chess to get ratings. So without further ado, I want to jump into talking about Dance Moms. And because videos like these are usually demonetized, I do have a sponsor in today's video. So if you want to watch that really quick, it'll roll here. Hi friends, editing me here. And today's video is proudly sponsored by Way. You guys know that I've been using Way hair care for forever at this point. I think it's going on two years. And with spring being just around the corner, I thought this was the perfect time to tell you some of my favorite products that I use by them so that you can get a nice fresh spring restart. I feel like there is no better way to rejuvenate and restart your life than with new hair care products. And these are some of the ones that I use on a daily basis to help keep my hair looking fresh and healthy and nourished. Very first thing I want to talk about, which I know I talk about this product to death, but it's because it's literally the best thing I have ever tried is the Way Leave-In Conditioner. I have gone through so many bottles of this. I used to use like two to three separate leave-in conditioners to try to make my hair soft and detangled because I used to really struggle with that. And this product has been absolutely incredible. It is the only one that I use now. I use a very generous amount every time I wash my hair. I've said it before, but I will say it again. It is literally liquid gold in a bottle. <laughs> that is the best way I can describe it. It just works so well at getting any snarls out of your hair and keeping your hair feeling super soft and just making your hair look beautiful. This is by far my favorite product by them. So absolutely love the Way Finishing Cream. This is something that I use after I'm done with this. I usually spray this let it sit for a little while and then I brush out my hair and then I put this in this especially if you have thinner hair like I do you really do not need a lot of this product I use maybe a dime size amount rub it into my hands really good and then make sure it's evenly distributed all throughout sort of from like here down I don't really put it in my roots because I find that if you already have hair that's more prone to get oily or hair that's thinner like mine this product you want to use a tiny little bit but it does give you that beautiful shine without making your hair look oily after one day of use 
finally, I want to talk about the texturizing hairspray because this is an absolute godsend whenever I'm trying to curl my hair. I struggle so hard because my hair is so thin with getting those really voluminous, beautiful curls. And this product makes it so much easier. I spray a little bit of this in right before I curl my hair, curl my hair, and then spray even more just kind of all around while I'm like shushing up the curls. And this really helps give my hair not only more defined curls, it helps that definition last so much longer after I've curled my hair. It doesn't immediately fall flat or fall out. There are so many different products from Way that I use literally my entire hair care routine at this point. So if you guys want to have any sort of new fun change for the springtime, you can go to T-H-E-O-U-A-I dot com and use code SMOKY for 15% off your purchase. That is T-H-E-O-U-A-I dot com and use code SMOKY for 15% off your purchase. Thank you so much to Way for sponsoring this video and also making my hair feel incredible always. Um, and let's jump into the video. So if you've never heard of Dance Moms before, I'm gonna just do a quick overview of the show for you guys. It premiered in 2011 on the Lifetime Network and was actually an immediate hit for them. Originally, the show was only supposed to be a six episode mini series. And actually the creation of the show is super interesting because originally it was supposed to be every week the camera crew went to a different dance studio and sort of looked at an inside world of what competitive dance was and also kind of how intense a lot of the mothers who helped with dancing were. The original concept of the show was definitely supposed to be much more like toddlers and tiara-esque and not so much focused on one particular dance studio, but they found the Abby Lee Dance Studio, which is what the entire show is focused around. And after they filmed their original six episode miniseries, the network thought that they had a smash hit on their hands. They decided that they wanted to pick up the show to do multiple seasons. Now, Abby Lee Miller, who was definitely one of the major catalysts in getting this show picked up just because of her absolutely brutal style of dance teaching, was painted as this sort of strict, no-nonsense, very successful dance teacher, even though there is not a lot to back up that that's true. Her mother owned this dance studio, and when Abby was 14, she started choreographing for some of her mother's dance routines, and then in the 80s, she was certified by Dance Masters of America to become a teacher. Now, I'd actually never heard of Dance Masters of America before. I never knew that there was a certification process to get hired by them, and I actually looked into it. It's a pretty rigorous process. You have to be over the age of 18, you have to have three years of dance experience for even applying, and then you have to pass multiple tests in order to get your certification. And something I found especially interesting when I was looking into Dance Masters of America is that they take their role of ethics in dance incredibly seriously. And I think that this should really just paint the picture right at the beginning of how heinous this show was, because in 2012, right after the show aired, the Dance Masters of America actually stripped Abby Lee Miller's membership because they felt that her methods of teaching directly violated the ethics of what it meant to be a dance teacher. So let's just like start it off by saying the show aired and the literal certification process to become a dance teacher stripped her of her title because of the way that she was teaching these children. Now I want to talk a little bit about the original cast of Dance Moms because I do firmly believe this show went into many different phases over time. That's not really what I want to be talking about today. I more want to talk about the problem with Dance Moms, but there's a lot of really interesting videos, I'll link some below, that talk about more the evolution of the show and how through the different cast members there was definitely different phases, different things that happened. It would add in new cast members, take people out, and it would really change the dynamic of the show. But I really accredit most of the show's initial success to the original cast members. So did Maddie and Mackenzie Ziegler, whose mom's name is Melissa. Now, in the very first episode, it is established that Maddie Ziegler is the perfectionist. There's one scene where she's getting sick during her dance practice, like they're running the group number. She doesn't feel good. She obviously has a stomach ache. She's like crying in the bathroom. And then her mother pulls her aside and is like, you can't leave dance, so suck it up, basically. And Maddie, like, jumps right back into the dance. It's probably one of the saddest scenes I've ever seen in terms of a child being very obviously sick and not being afforded a fucking break. Maddie is cast as sort of the perfectionist who is super devoted to dance. She's literally eight years old, thick, and she's so good, and she wins all of the titles. Her younger sister, Mackenzie, is actually the youngest one in the group, and she's largely treated as kind of like a prop and as the very like cute one who just like dances around. That's kind of her thing. Two of the other moms actually have a podcast where they talk about the show and go through episode by episode breaking down kind of the behind the scenes. And I learned a lot of interesting information from listening to that podcast. One of the most interesting things I learned is that while the show is based in reality, 
the majority of this stuff wasn't real. The elite team that they're all on, all these girls are on to compete together with, was actually a team that was handpicked of just them. Originally, most of the girls were on separate teams based on ages. That's why you have people like Maddie, who's incredibly advanced, dancing next to her sister, who's like two years younger than her, who isn't nearly as advanced as she was. The original group of girls was created strictly for the show. And I think that that does bring up some interesting questions about even just the credibility of the dance education that they were getting. A lot of the defense of the show is that even though Abby was super strict and borderline, no, not even borderline, abusive and cruel to these girls, at least they were getting this really thorough, good dance education. But mo the majority of the girls weren't even dancing in the proper age group that they were supposed to be dancing in, which made some of them feel way behind and made others feel like they were way too far ahead to be doing these dances. Maddie and Mackenzie's mom, Melissa, was sort of painted as like the perfectionist. She like worked with Abby. She was sort of painted as like the kiss ass of the show. That was her title. And then we have Chloe and Christy. Chloe is super quiet. She's painted right in the beginning as number two to Maddie, which right off the bat in the first episode paints this weird competitiveness between these two eight-year-olds. It's like they're just fighting to get first place. While Chloe was much more quiet, her mom Christy was definitely much more outspoken. And I think a lot of times she was painted as sort of the villain of the show, especially in the early episodes, which is really interesting because the obvious villain is Abby Lee Miller. Anyway, there was also Holly and Nia. Holly had a doctorate in education and honestly is by far my favorite mom on this show. She is the only one that actually makes any semblance of sense at times. Nia was definitely painted as more of a work in progress dancer. She was often sort of at the bottom of things. She was always in the back of group dances. She wasn't given a lot of opportunities. And I'm gonna discuss later how I think a lot of racism played a massive role in that. There's a lot of criticism online, especially about this, that made it seem like Nia and Holly were somewhat tokenized, which I think is something I can definitely agree with. They weren't really given as much screen time as the other moms, and even though they were always respectful and kind, they often had really harsh verbal abuse thrown at them. We also have Kelly, Brooke, and Paige. Kelly being the mom. Kelly is super interesting to me because she used to dance with Abby, Abby's mom, when her mom owned the studio. She literally was taught dances by Abby since she was two years old. She knew everything that Abby Lee Miller stood for and still brought her children to them, which is something I'm forever perplexed by. I guess before the show, Kelly and Abby were actually really close friends. They were like super close, um, but I guess during the show there was a lot of strife between them. Kelly is definitely painted on the show as sort of a right hand to Christy, being sort of mean and villainous, which again is bonkers to me when Abby Lee Miller exists. Brooke, who was her oldest daughter, was also the oldest on the dance team. She was always painted as a brooding teenager, and honestly Paige, for the most part, kind of fell into the background unless she made a mistake. That's literally her her job, essentially, was to be screamed at whenever she made a mistake and never shown if she did something right. That was Paige's job at nine years old. Both of her daughters were often used as punching bags on the show by Abby, and I think a lot of that probably had to do with just the years of history that the Highlands and Abby Lee Miller had together. But this strife in their long-term relationship was definitely exploited on the show, especially in the first few seasons. And finally, for the first season, you had Vivian and Kathy. Kathy actually owned a completely separate dance studio called Candy Apple, it's, it's been made pretty clear that she really had no intention of like joining the Abby Lee Dance Company. She just wanted to be on the show with her daughter. That was kind of her whole point. Vivienne is a fucking mood, dude. She just does not, any like meme you've seen of dance moms is Vivienne. Like she did not care. She di obviously did not really love dancing that much. She still does it, I guess. She does like tap dancing and stuff. So I'm glad to see she enjoys it now, but it's very obvious at the time that she just like, at, at the very least, she just didn't want to be on this television show. Like I think that's really what it was. She obviously wasn't a fan of being filmed and having to do all of this extra stuff for dance. But her mom, Kathy, is painted as, again, the very loud mouth dance mom. She's also painted as somewhat of a villain on the show. Her daughter was essentially used as a prop for her to gain celebrity from this show. That's like all I can discern from the Vivian Kathy storyline is that Kathy wanted to be on a reality TV show and used her daughter as a plot device to get her on there. And honestly, this cast of characters that we just talked about 
all culminated in this very weird sort of, I don't want to say magical because that insinuates that it was good, but it definitely made for somewhat addicting reality television. The show went on to be one of the most successful Lifetime reality shows that they've ever had. And the main reason for that is because this original cast of characters worked so well together at just hating each other. They, the moms all hated each other with the exception of a few. Abby hated all of the moms and the kids were essentially just stuck in the middle of all of this horrific toxicity while cameras filmed them. With the cast of characters set, the show premiered in July 13th of 2011 and became just an instant success, like an instant hit. And honestly, one of the biggest things I'll say just to end my recap of the show in terms of like who was in the cast and when it all started, kind of what happened. The biggest thing that I'll say is that a lot of the interviews that I've heard with producers and the moms and all the podcasts they do and stuff, the underlying theme I've heard is that the reason everybody initially wanted to do the show was to showcase the incredible world of competitive dance. And also, to kind of showcase, you know, that mom, the, the dance moms or the dance dads could be a little bit kooky. Like that was kind of the entire point of the show. But the main focus that everyone talks about was the dancing. And I think the really interesting part about this show and especially the people that ended up being on the show is that the majority of the show did not focus on the dancing. It focused on the toxicity and the drama and the hatred that was spewed at literal children for millions of people to consume and enjoy. There was emotional, verbal, and at sometimes physical abuse that all of the children I just mentioned had to go through. And while I think it's an easy out to say that the producers were just trying to focus on the world of dance, personally, I think that's bullshit. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because the very first topic I wanna talk about when it comes to dance moms that is disgusting is the egregious exploitation of these kids to make money and drum up hype for this show. One of the first major scandals of this show actually happened in literal episode two when the girls were asked to perform a dance called Electricity. The show captured and put onto national television all of these very young girls, most of whom were under the age of 10, in non-age appropriate dance costumes that pretty much everyone across the board who actually did competitive dance was like, there's not a reason in hell that these children should have been put in dance costumes that looked like that doing the dance moves that they were doing. It was so horrific that even the moms in the episode that was airing were vehemently against having their daughters perform in these costumes, but that didn't matter because they did it anyway and it was shown and aired on Lifetime. It's later been speculated that the producers of the show actually really encouraged Abby to do this, to sort of drum up hype and controversy around the show. But the reason I want to bring this up first is because the sexual exploitation of these young children in order to drum up views and hype has real world implications, especially in the dance world. The actions that were put on television for millions of people to watch have been called out by child advocates in the dance world, saying that it has real harm to other dancers that weren't even on the show and just went to these competitions. I also do just wanna preface this, I shouldn't have to do this, but I'm going to anyway. Everything I'm about to talk about in this part of the video literally has nothing to do and is at no fault of any of the children on this show. Everything that I'm going to discuss is the fault of the adults around them and the people who used them for these reasons. I just wanna make that super clear. None of this is those children's fault. Even for a second, all of these kids that were on the show that had to do these types of things were victims of exploitation from their teachers, their mothers, and the producers of the show. Want to, and the network, frankly. So I just want to make that super clear. Now, I already briefly discussed other dance, other people in the dance world calling out this type of stuff, but it got really bad at certain points. After the show aired, a lot of competitions would not allow the Dance Moms cast to enter their competitions because of the pure just safety risk that it imposed having them there. A lot of other dance moms and dance teachers were incredibly concerned for the safety of their dancers in general because they feared that this show over made other young children who danced a target. And even the stars of the show had to deal with horrific things. There's reports that Maddie Ziegler sent many disturbing packages and disturbing images and was also openly stalked at her dance studio and at competitions. And the producers and moms and Abby Lee Miller did nothing to quell this. In season two, episode nine, there is an episode that aired once and then was never aired again. This is after all of this outcry is happening 
after all of these children are being put in very unsafe positions. The show did nothing to quell that. Instead, Abby Lee Miller made a dance that was so offensive, Lifetime literally doesn't re-air the episode anymore. The episode is wiped from the internet. In the episode, the girls are supposed to be appearing nude on stage with only fans covering them. These are eight, nine, and 10 year old children being made to look like they are not wearing clothing on stage and only have fans covering them. And every single mother, producer, and head at Lifetime approved that to go out and thought that was an acceptable storyline to be portraying of children. After they've been stalked and sent horrific images and messages and the dance world has had an outcry that these types of things are actively dangerous and hurting other people with real world implications. And this isn't just me saying this, at the time, tons of child advocates were coming forward and disavowing Abby Lee Miller and the producers of the show and Lifetime for not only making these children do these dances, but also allowed them to be aired to millions of people. This theme of over-sexualization on the show of literal children has been an ongoing issue on Dance Moms. Every like two or three episodes, there's just an absolutely insane thing that happens that makes no sense like even the last at one of the last episodes that all of the original cast members were in the girls were put in bras and heels and told to like dance on chairs the most annoying part about that last dance is that those girls were actually at a different studio at the time there's a point when the studios like split it's a whole thing. The show is very complicated. There's like a billion different dance teachers, a billion different studios, a bunch of different rivalries. But some of the original girls in one of their last episodes did do that dance that was really over-sexualized. And I think the craziest part about that dance is that Abby Lee Miller was in the audience and stormed out of the audience saying the dance was trashy and that she would never have her kids dancing like that. And this moral high ground that Abby chose to take in this moment is so thinly veiled by the seasons and seasons and seasons of documented sexualization of these children, including kissing Maddie Ziegler on the lips and forcing her to kiss a boy for her first kiss on stage, screaming that they need to be shaking their butts and boobs and need to be acting more sexy all the time to 10 year olds, and also facilitating a storyline where a 13 year old, Brooke at the time, was being forced into dating one of the older male dancers in the company and was pushed to go on a physical date with him that very obviously made both of them incredibly uncomfortable, but was still filmed and shown to millions of people. And Honestly, I think the failure to protect these children is a failure on all fronts. I feel like that's the end theme of all of this, but a lot of the anger that I have about it and that I think a lot of other people should have about it is really focused on the producers, Abby Lee Miller, who was a producer during the show, and also the mothers. A lot of the fault gets put on the mothers, and I do think that is where a lot of the fault lies. Not even just the mothers, but the parents of these children. A lot of the fault gets put onto them, and I think that's rightfully so. Christy and Kelly, like I said, have a podcast where they discuss a lot of the episodes, and what I was really hoping to gain from that podcast was hearing maybe even just like a little bit of an explanation about why they did what they did and why they allowed these things to happen to their children. And there are a couple of episodes where they do kind of break down and feel really bad about the way that they allowed this to happen. But for the most part, the overall theme, what they're saying and their excuse is that they were under contract and that there was nothing they can do. And I don't know the truth of that, I guess. I can't imagine allowing my child to be exploited just so I could stay on a television show. I can't imagine letting my dog be exploited so I could stay on a television show. So like, that's very confusing to me. But also if that is the case, if you're signing contracts that give you no authority over what your child wears or does on national television that could be putting them in extreme harm's way, then there needs to be laws in place that protect children more and that there are advocates for children on sets. If these mothers truly felt like they were so locked into those contracts that they could not do a single thing to protect their children, that's truly what was happening and that's, and that's how they felt. I don't know how much of that I believe, but if that's really how they felt, why is there nobody on set to advocate for them instead? Who isn't bound to a contract? Who isn't bound to stay on the show? Why is there nobody else there? Because obviously the parents at the time felt like they could not do anything about this. And again, I don't know if I believe that. I think part of it was probably contractual. I think the other part of it was a need and a want to stay on this stupid fucking television show and have their 90 seconds of fame at the expense of their children. But like, that's what I'm thinking. I also think it's important to talk about the verbal and physical 
that happened on this show. Now that the show was no longer filming, most of the dancers actually have very prominent social media presences and talk really directly about the trauma that they faced on the show and how it directly impacted them. I think the most surprising and also sickening part about all of these young girls coming forward and discussing their experience on the show and discussing the way it traumatized them I think the craziest part about that is that nobody is surprised because we all watched it on national television for eight seasons. We saw every single week while Abby called her young dancers every name under the sun from like stupid, ugly, bad at dancing, telling them they're all replaceable, telling them to save their tears for the pillowcase, throwing a physical chair at Paige Highland because her mother forgot to put stoppers on the bottom it. And let's just really quickly discuss the psychological damage that something like the fucking pyramid can cause. If you don't know what the pyramid is, basically every week, Abby Lee, and this was made up by the producers, they didn't do this before the show started. The pyramid was basically where Abby would rank all of her dancers for the week. And if you're at the top of the pyramid, that means you did well. And if you were at the bottom, that means you did a terrible job. And she would go through and reveal the pictures one by one of all of these girls, explaining to them why they sucked and why they were bad and why they were good if they were good. And even when you were at the top of the pyramid, a lot of the moms have talked about the fact that being at the top was actually a bad thing because that meant that you were going to be targeted that week to have you taken down a few pegs. She basically had them all stand in a line and rate them as dancers from best to worst while their mothers fought and screamed and yelled to defend their children and their place in the pyramid. The kids weren't allowed to talk. And it would usually end in all of the girls just crying. Like, we're all like, uh, like, it can't be surprising to people that watch the show the emotional abuse that these children are now claiming they face. That's horrific. And honestly, there's a lot of horrific cases of Abby attacking Paige Highland, of her attacking Brooke Highland, of her attacking Chloe. She often mocked Chloe for her appearance and also constantly compared her to Maddie, who she kept saying was like a superstar. There was also a point when Chloe was not technically a part of the Abby Lee Dance Company anymore, but she was still on the show. So she would still go to like the filming time, but she wasn't dancing with that company anymore. So there was a part of time where that was happening. And as a result of that, Abby wanted her off the show so bad and hated her and her mother so much that she refused to call her by her name. She just called her that girl. She literally wouldn't give her a name in dance rehearsals because she just wanted them off the show. And Abby openly admits to that type of psychological torture. She literally says she hated people so much and didn't want people in the show anymore. So she would just viciously attack them mentally until they couldn't take it anymore and they would leave the show. And I feel like we have to talk about Nia in all of this too, because she has been very vocal about the blatant racism that she experienced on the show, which again, if you watched it, is painfully obvious. She was always typecast and put into roles where she was forced to wear afros or play into other black stereotypes. As the only black cast members of this show for the first few seasons, Holly often tried to defend Nia and call out this type of racism and discuss how hurtful these stereotypes were. And instead of being heard, Holly was often met with cruel comments and not even from just Abby, but also the other dance moms would literally defend Abby and say things like, well, Nia might get more opportunities because she's black than my daughter. So I don't know why you're complaining. One of the standout things that happened to me when I was watching clips from the show was in some of the later seasons, Nia was literally told that another dancer who was white was more African than her. And Nia has come out and said, and so, so, so have all these other cast members, they've come out and said that the abuse and torment and racism that we saw on camera is only a fraction of what was actually happening off camera. A lot of the moms have come out and a lot of the girls have come out and said that they actually tried to give Abby like a good edit. Like they were trying to paint her as like the good redeemable dance teacher, even though she said and did all of this horrific stuff. Mia also has come forward to say that Abby would often insult her and Holly based on racial stereotypes and that that had a severe impact on her. And this racist behavior was not only just Abby, but also the other moms. There's a mom, Jill, who entered in season two with her daughter Kendall and she's pretty famously tried to take the role of Rosa Parks away from Nia to give to her white daughter Kendall when they were doing a dance about Rosa Parks. Now Abby has a very different story. She blames the producers for her, provo for her provocative dances and cruel outbursts saying that they knew how to push her buttons to get a reaction from her. And they used that to create drama between her and the moms to make the show better, which that is how reality TV works sometimes. Like we all know reality TV show producers are a different kind of 
cruel, I guess you could say. But also, with all of these accounts from other cast members saying that Abby was even crueler off camera, I don't think that really tracks. I think if they wanted to make her that much of a villain, they very easily could have aired those clips, but they didn't because I think they were also trying to somewhat protect her. The other major issues of the show in terms of just horribleness, that's not even a fucking word, is that the moms would often get in verbal and physical altercations in front of the children, and oftentimes they were fighting about the children right in front of them. Christy would scream that Maddie wasn't even a good dancer and that Chloe won more titles in front of her. Abby and Kelly got into a physical altercation where Abby like tried to bite her and Kelly smacked her in the face. All in front of these children who are just sobbing in a corner, they're trying to usher them out of the room. That fight actually ended in Kelly getting arrested and having charges brought up against her, which were later thrown out. But seeing this type of physical and verbal abuse was not only damaging to these very young dancers in person, but they also had to relive these moments on television and see the way it was released to the public and see the public's reaction to their parents getting into physical and verbal altercations with each other. Most of these young girls have said the emotional distress that was caused by not only being a part of the show and having to deal with it, but also having to relive it and rewatch it has been insane. The only like big one of the regular dancers that still even talks to Abby is Jojo Siwa and she has been very open about her defense of Abby and basically says that she wouldn't be anything without Dance Mom so she's not going to say a bad word about Abby which is fair enough. I do take slight issue with the way that she's gone about it at times because I feel like a lot of times she is used to undercut the pain that a lot of the other girls are trying to describe but also at the same time, she experienced what she experienced and she's allowed to have her opinions about it. Now, this little section, I literally called just other issues on the show. So this is just bullet points of other absolutely insane things that happened on this show. One of the biggest problems I saw when rewatching a lot of the clips is the intensely dark themes and undertones that a lot of these dances carried. So maybe if they weren't non-age appropriate dances. A lot of times they were theming that was just way too inappropriate for an eight-year-old child to be actively trying to portray on a stage. A lot of the performances centered around child abduction, death, child exploitation, child suicide, car crashes, like drunk driving accidents, other people dying. And at the time, the crazy part is, a lot of people really didn't have a lot of public outcry about the adult theming of these dances and the really heavy, intense undertones that that would put on a child trying to portray those things. I even found a Glamour article when I was researching that talked about like all of these really intense dances that little children were performing. And it talks about it, even though there's heavy content, the girls really pulled them off. These types of dances and the content around them actually reminds me of the video that Allison Stoner made a couple of years ago where she talked about how the emotional turmoil that can come from children having to play and participate in these really intense topics can be really distressing and hard for them. To have to go one week from playing a child who s**t themselves to then the next week doing like a bumblebee dance is really jolting children and difficult for them to understand and grasp. And while children will definitely portray these heavier roles and do these heavier things, there needs to be a certain amount of therapy or support for those children so they have the resources to understand and emotionally process the very difficult roles that they're supposed to be portraying. And there was no mention of the emotional support that was being provided to them so that they would be able to get through having to portray something that dark and that heavy. On top of all of that, Abby herself just was found a fraud, so that's crazy. Like, in the middle of the show, Abby just goes to prison. She was found guilty on fraud charges, she filed for bankruptcy, and the case was pending, and it was found while she filed for bankruptcy that she concealed $750,000 from the judge. The judge actually found out about that income through watching Dance Moms, which I think is just peak, like, Erica Jane irony. Like, I love when people get found out on reality television shows that they force themselves to be on where they're absolute terrors. And this actually led to her having to pay multiple fines, spending a year in prison and having two years of probation, which actually didn't lead to the stop of the show. They kind of just like continued on without her 
and had all these guest like choreographers come in, which that was a whole different thing. But anyway, she eventually came back after these assisting instructors and really prison was not ever super talked about on the show, her time in prison. Like they definitely did not talk about it. It was a big deal at the time. She did a lot of press about going to prison and just kind of what that was gonna be like. But yeah, on top of all of this like crazy stuff, she like didn't pay her taxes. So great. Now, after talking about kind of all of the insane abuse that happened, I do think it's important to talk about where these girls are now. Most of these girls are very successful on social media. They have crazy TikTok and Instagram platforms. Mia and Kendall both go to different colleges and are finding a lot of success there. Chloe still has a social media presence, but she's also in college and trying to make her own way. So even though most of them have found this sort of social media success, a few have also moved into more mainstream success. Maddie Ziegler obviously is very well known. She was in the Sia videos while dancing mom was still happening and then went on tour with Sia. She also has been in a bunch of critically acclaimed movies and now dips her toes in acting along with dancing. She's one of definitely the most well-known alumni from the cast, but the other alumni from the cast that's the most well-known joined in the later seasons and that was Jojo Siwa. Jojo Siwa was absolutely tormented on Dance Moms, but used it as a springboard for her YouTube channel. She gained like over 10 million subscribers on YouTube. She worked with Nickelodeon for years and now has a brand that is worth over a billion dollars. An interesting thing to talk about, after Brooke, Kelly, and Paige Highland left the show, Paige Highland actually did try to sue Abby for emotional damages. The case was let go. There wasn't enough evidence to support her claim for how much she wanted, but people did try to bring legal action against Abby for the way that they were treated on the show and the emotional distress and damage that it caused them. I think I could continue on and on with Dance Moms, um, forever because every time I think I'm done talking about this or I, I like have a d different thing I want to bring up I find another freaking TikTok clip that just shows the atrocities that happened on this show and I could just keep going forever but I think there are a few bigger things I want to talk about the first is the general exploitation of these children and the way that their general autonomy and privacy was just blatantly stripped away from them they were treated horrifically and experienced years of emotional and sometimes physical abuse and it was broadcasted to millions of people and seen as okay and the network continued to pick up the show and there was very little outcry at the time there's a lot now a lot of outcry i actually feel like there's a very big resurgence of dance moms in the last year i see it on tiktok all of the time i've seen videos pop up about this show way more than i used to i think people are starting to remember it and starting to rewatch it and seeing just how upsetting and sad it is for these kids that were on this show. There's also like the resurgence of podcasts and all of the moms have like YouTube channel presences that they do. So like everyone's talking about the show again, which I think is bringing it up again. And I think the big takeaway here is that the entire system that is meant to protect children in the entertainment industry absolutely failed these children in, in more ways than even what I just talked about in this video. Like I could go off for 20 minutes about how the moms on their podcast openly talk about how their kids were going to school for eight hours a day and then at the studio for five hours a day and then were on weekend dance competitions where they were filming constantly and being crazily overworked, which like should never be happening to literal children. There are laws in place to protect them. And honestly, if we're talking about who's to blame for this type of abuse, I mean, you can blame the parents and I think I do blame the parents partially, but also I think that the parents, and this is what I end up saying in a lot of my videos about child exploitation and things of this nature is that when a parent has an invested interest as well in the success of their child, unfortunately, history has shown us that parents don't protect their kids when they are profiting from it. Now that does not make what these parents did and what they allowed okay by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's horrific what they allowed, but I also think it speaks to a bigger problem that needs to be addressed in the entertainment industry and in the social media sphere, because I think reality TV is this weird combination of those two things. It speaks to the need for child advocates on sets and for these social media stars. It speaks to a need for somebody who has no emotional, financial, personal investment in that child being on that show and staying on that show. And it speaks to the need to have someone in a child's corner who does not have an invested interest in that project as well. Literally all shows of this nature have this same problem where the parents are not looking out for their children. I also think though too, there needs to be 
accountability and standards held for the producers and the creators of this show and Lifetime as a network for airing all of this. There's no protection for children on reality television of what they can and can't show. Those children should have never been able to be shown giving the illusion of on a stage to millions of people. Where are the protocols in place to protect children from those things? Why don't those exist? Why are people whose sole purpose is to drum up outrage around children to get money, where are the checks and balances for those people? And finally, Abby Lee Miller, who is just an abusive human being. One of the most annoying things about Dance Moms getting popular on TikTok is not only having to see all of this stuff all the time and see the blatant abuse that these children faced, but on top of that, it's the comments that kill me. Because when you're watching one specific clip and you have a vague memory of the show, you're like, okay, yeah, Abby Lee was mean, but look at this time she gave them like really nice Christmas presents. Look at this time she hugged Nia when she won first place and was proud of her. Like Abby might have had weird work ethic and like a weird way of showing it, but she loved those kids. No, she didn't. She saw those kids as a meal ticket. Those kids, she profited directly off of them. We cannot spread this narrative that because she was mean to them and abusive, that it was just her being tough on the kids. That's not the narrative that can be spread from this. She was abusive and she was cruel in her tactics and she did it selfishly. That's not loving and caring about a dancer. That's not being hard on somebody so they can get better at something. That's not what she was doing. There's no world where that is what she was doing. This show fundamentally changed the lives of all of the dancers that were on it. It took away their childhood. It took away their schooling for most of them. Most of them ended up being homeschooled. Took away their privacy, their safety, and all they got out of it was one night a week where they could be normal kids. Every other day, they were working. They were seven years old and working six days a week for 15 hour days between school and this stupid show. I'm gonna end this video on my soapbox that I always end on, which is that there absolutely needs to be more protection for these kids. It's disgusting and horrific when you actually go through and look at what happened on shows like this and see the danger it caused, see the people that tried to speak out, see the real world implications that happened because of this abuse, see the lives that were hurt, the kids that were hurt who still have severe trauma from this show. It's despicable to see, frankly. Sorry, I could really go on forever. There's so many other things I feel like I could say about just the show in general and the way that they used these kids, but I won't. Um, <laughs> I've already been talking, I'm losing my voice. Um, anyway. And that's it for me. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, I am just so happy you're here watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, my social justice spotlight will be linked down below. And yeah, I love you guys so much. And I will see you in the next one. I promise it won't be a month and a half from now. Bye.